Now, so far, I believe we covered the seedless and the seed vascular in the past, so this is more of a review. The seed plants is where we are in terms of looking at the representatives and the phylum division names, which we did as well, but just to look at the different representatives and the life cycle, alternation of generation, reproduction, instead of the spores, we're going to transition to the, if we're not reproducing by spores, we're reproducing by seeds, okay? So the seed vascular plants, the final group, let's call these guys the most advanced because in terms of sheer numbers, size, and longevity, they exist in the seed vascular plant group. Now we have two categories of seed plants, gymnosperms and angiosperms. So let's look at them from those two distinctions, gymnosperm versus angiosperm. Now the gymnosperm has four divisions, four phyla that we'll look at, with one of them being a representative, and the angiosperm, one phylum that we'll look at, but in terms of numbers, obviously the angiosperms outnumber all the other plant groups. We'll look at those numbers in a, in a few minutes. So for the gymnosperm, the gymnosperms are referred to as the naked seed plants. Why is that? No fruit covering the developing seed. Okay, as you look at the seed development in the gymnosperm, you will see that Outside of the integuments, which becomes the seed coat, there would be no extra tissue, the ovary, which in the seed plant, in the angiosperm, sorry, develops into the fruit. So naked seeds, because the seeds are not protected beyond the seed coat, there's no additional tissue around the developing seeds in the gymnosperm. Now the four phyla that we're going to look at, starting with the main phyla, coniferophyta. And what's the other three? Ginkgo phyta. Cycado phyta. And the other one with the, the G being silent. Nitophytes. Now you can also call these plants the cone-bearing plants. Okay? They all develop cones that their seeds develop in. They all produce cones, the cone-bearing plants, the gymnosperms. And the male cone obviously contains the male gametophyte. It's also sometimes referred to as the pollen cone. And the female cone, which is also referred to as the seed cone, develops the female gametophyte. So in these cones, the seed gets fertilized, okay? They're going to reproduce by seeds, yes? And what's a seed, since we haven't defined that yet? As we transition from spores to seeds, what would you say a seed is structurally? Define, describe a seed. Embryo. It's an embryo, but is that the only thing in it? It's an embryo. It's a young plant. It's, it's referred to as a fertilized ovule, a seed. A fertilized ovule with the embryo, a food source, and a seed coat that protects the developing embryo. Okay, so a seed is a fertilized ovule. And we are saying, structurally, we have an embryo in the seed. We have a food source and an external seed coat that protects it. So the embryo is developing within the seed. We have a food source for the developing embryo since it cannot make its own food. And we have a protective seed coat around the embryo so that it's not damaged as, as it's developing. 
protected until it starts growing through germination. But the seed is an evolution in the plant kingdom from the initial spores in the earlier plants. Yes? And so we have the seedless non-vascular once again, seedless vascular seed plants that dominate in terms of sheer size, numbers, and in terms of the gymnosperms, these guys are the record setters on the planet. That's something worth noting. The gymnosperms are the record setters on the planet in terms of the size and numbers. The conifera fighter, correct. In terms of size and age, sorry, not numbers, size and age. They're the largest plants on the planet. You know, yeah, there's a giant sequoia in the Sequoia National Forest in California. It's 110 meters tall. And some of these have been recorded to live around 2,500 years. So in terms of size and longevity, the record set as a conifero fighters the largest plants on the planet. Now, in terms of alternation of generation, we've been tracking that along the way. We have the gametophyte for the first group. We have the sporophyte for the seedless vascular plants. And what's the dominant generation for the seed vascular plants? The sporophyte again. And we'll put that in blue. All right, just try another color. <coughs> so the final group again, just like the seedless vascular, the sporophyte is the dominant generation, sporophyte generation. And the gametophyte in this case is going to be dependent. It's going to grow on the sporophyte in terms of the cones that we talked about. The cones house the gametophyte, the male cone being the pollen cone, or in the lab, it was called the staminate, okay? So again, just terminology that we need to be aware of. The male cones are called staminate or pollen cone, okay, the males. And the female cone will be the ovulate or seed cone. Okay? And these cones contain the gametophytes. That is now dependent on the sporophyte. It's growing out of the sporophyte. As they alternate generations still, the gametophyte generation has become much reduced in the more advanced plants. Now the final group, the angiosperm, phylum, phylum name, anthophyta, when you look at this particular group, they outnumber all the other phyla put together. 250,000 species of anthophyta, the, the flowering plants, right? So now we've gone to another evolutionary adaptation, the evolution of or the emergence of the flower. Now in terms of gametophyte, sporophyte, what does the flower represent in the plant? In the final group. What's in the flower? So the flower represents the gametophyte. The flower represents the gametophyte. When you look at a flower, it's going to have male and female structures. So the flower is a representation of the gametophyte, but it's, it's a unique structure that enables this plant to be so successful. There are no flowers in any of the other plant groups. And as I said, numbers-wise, 250,000 species of anthophyta, something there is enabling them to be so successful. So what about the flower? If you think back to lab again on the activity you did, what about the flower 
is enabling that success. The way it's pollinated. Very good, Dylan. Pollination. Yes, this is a term that evolve in the seed plants and there's pollination in the gymnosperms as well. Pollination is the transfer of pollen from the male parts to the female parts. And so in terms of the flowering plants, the, the anthophyta, they're the most successful plants on the planet because the emergence of the flower had ena has enabled them to be more effective in their means of reproduction, starting with the pollination process. It's a more direct process. In the lab, you looked at agents of pollination, the wind, bat, bee, okay? So you have the wind to pollinate, and you also have animals that can pollinate. Now, which one do you think will be more effective, the wind or animals? Animals, insects, why? Why would the insects, that's correct, why would the insects be more effective than the wind? Right, so the wind is on based on chance. It has to get there somehow and stick. Whereas with the insects, there's a direct connection. It goes from one flower to the next, and it directly takes the, the pollen there, and more of a direct transfer of pollen, therefore more of a direct transfer or chance of fertilization. So let's end with that. The two processes that you need to be fully aware of is pollination versus fertilization. And it gets confused many, many times. So define pollination. What's pollination? I just said it. The transfer of pollen. Pollination is just simply the process of the transfer of pollen from the male parts of the flower, the pollen grains, to the female parts of the flower. And a dir direct transfer is pollination. Fertilization, as opposed to pollination, is what? What's fertilization? Yes, we were all here as a result of fertilization, guys, right? The transfer or the fusion of the sperm with the egg. The fusion of the sperm with the egg, that's fertilization. When the sperm fertilizes the egg, the sperm unites with the egg, that is the process of fertilization as opposed to just the transfer of pollen. So the transfer of pollen has to take place first in the plants, followed by the sperm fertilizing the egg. And so in the flowering plants, guys, it is the most successful plants in terms of numbers. There are more flowering plants on the planet than any of the other plants because of this pollination, fertilization, and then the protection of the seed in the form of a, 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 an, an additional tissue, which is known as the fruit. And so the seed is a fertilized ovule. And so what do you think we can define a fruit as? Right, the additional tissue around the, the ovule, which is the ovary. So a mature ovary, okay? A mature ovary is what really develops into the fruit. After the, the seed gets fertilized in the ovule, the tissue surrounding the seed, the ovary, develops as a protection for the developing seed, and hence it's enclosed as opposed to the gymnosperms, which were naked seeds. And so pollination, fertilization, development of the fruit, all means of allowing these plants to be the most successful on the planet in terms of numbers.